We are back with more soap. This is going to be season three, episode 10. Uh, I am sick, which is why I haven't been recording much today. I thought maybe I would eventually start to feel better, but I think my period is coming back, which means I'm not going to feel better, so I might as well just go ahead and push through and get this recorded. But I am feeling bad, so we might have to pause. Also, I'm having hot and cold flashes, so I might strip at some point. In the last episode of Soap, Jessica found out Billy is in love with his teacher. Mary found out from real birth that she'd been living with a clone. Dutch found out Eunice was fooling around with another man. And Eunice found out that Dutch found out when she found oatmeal dumped on her head. Danny found someone named Polly at the cemetery that he found very nice. And Jessica saw Chester in a hotel with another woman. And she went to find out if it was really him. Want to find out? Stay tuned for this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. The hot flashes make sense. Why do I have cold flashes? And this is... That trips so. me out every time. episode shortly after Jessica followed Chester upstairs to his hotel room. We better get started. I'm parked in the 20 minutes zone. <laughs> Who is it? Jessica. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> <Hide>. <laughs> Oh, I love that she was straight up open and honest and said who she was and didn't try to say, like, house cleaning or management or something to trick him. He knows he's fucked. Jessica who? <laughs> it's me, Chester. Chester who? <laughs> it's Jessica Chester. Uh, is it Jessica or <coughs> Chester? Make up your mind. <laughs> no, <laughs> Chester, it is me, your wife, Jessica Tate. Oh, Jessica Tate. Well, uh, why don't you say, uh, I'm on the phone, Jess. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Get down on all fours. Now, Chester. <laughs> You're going to be a table. You weird, Chester. <laughs> Chester? Uh, I'm on the phone, Jess. Don't move. Don't breathe. Chester? I can't make any noise. to go. I use this as my office. You see, I, uh, I work out of here. Yes, see? Makes no sense. You should be Chester, bad liar. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. You, you don't mind if I go to the bathroom? <laughs> no, I'd rather you go in there than in here. Chester, I have 
have a confession to make to you. I thought that I saw you come up here with another woman and I followed you. Oh, now, Chester, I am so sorry. I'm sorry I mistrusted you. But I am glad I came. Otherwise, Chester, those devils would linger with me. I'm shocked, Jason. Shocked. And deeply hurt that you don't trust me. I'm sorry, Jess. I have promised you, Jess. I have sworn to you. Those days are over. How much longer are you going to make me pay? How much longer are you going to torture me like this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm oh, so I'm sorry. Yes, you're very sorry, Jess. You're always sorry. Meanwhile, you watch every little move I make. You're ready to pounce on every little thing. It's frustrating for me to see this other woman being degraded in such a way and being silent while listening to Jessica being gaslighted and manipulated in this way. This is I am aware it's supposed to be funny, and in the 70s it probably was, but it's just making me angry. That might be the PMS talking. <laughs> What's that? It's a new thing, Italian furniture. <laughs> It's moving, Chester. What is it? A sheep. <laughs> I am so glad you have this hotel room, Chester, because you are not coming home. Thank God. I was ready to forgive Chester after he went to prison and he went through all of that stuff with Dutch. You know, I felt sympathy for him. But for him to just go right back to fucking around the second he gets back, fuck him. No, no, no more sympathy. Bert, what are you doing in here? I don't know why they call you in from the waiting room. Don't wait in the examining room. At least out there I can wear my pants and read Sports Illustrated. I know. They weigh you and forget about you. <laughs> I hate getting a physical. At least it's only once a year. You can't even take a nap while you're waiting. You could roll right off that table. And here, you could lie on the floor and bleed to death. I can't take any medical help in the golf course. Bert, don't you think you should go back to your room? The doctor might be there by now. No, he's not. He's on the phone, I heard. Did I forget from the last episode? He's buying the Grand Canyon to build condominiums. <laughs> here, let's see this. Look at this over here. Look at that. I'm an inch taller on this one. I grew in the wall. I'm going home. What? <laughs> Barry, please. I can't stand on all day while he flies Arizona. I'm not dressed like this. I can't. Look at this. Will you pink and blue? <laughs> we know what we are. <laughs> Maybe they can't tell. Uh, yeah, I'm going home there. Come on. Oh, Bert, come on. You need a physical. You had insomnia. I think you should find out why. Yeah, I know. There's no great mystery. Why? I got space lag. <laughs> space lag. Bert, <laughs> come on, Mary, please. There's jet lag. There's jet lag, right? This is space lag. It's much worse. Space lag. Oh, Doc, fancy seeing you here. What happened? The stock market closed? <laughs> hey, Bert. Hey, Mary. Hey, two in one room doesn't reduce the rate, you know. Huh? <laughs> hey, you look wonderful. Pink. Uh, yeah. Well, I might as well start with Mary. Go ahead. I think that you should start with Bert. He's the one with the symptoms. Symptoms? What symptoms, Mary? Come on, it's nothing. Why, the little insomnia? Who cares? A few more days of a... Sorry, right, but... If Bert is the one that's having trouble, why are they both wearing hospital gowns? Did the doctor just want to see Mary in one? Just in the earth time, I'll be tip-top. <laughs> earth time? 
Yeah, Earth time. <laughs> you see nobody's you know spacemen. And I went with them up on their spaceship, and I got a real bad case of space flight. That's all. Hey, I flown to Cincinnati and been a zombie. When I travel with spacemen, I have a terrible time sleeping. There, you see that? I also can't eat the food. <laughs> Tell me about it. It's cocktail food. <laughs> I lost six pounds. Yeah. Oh, you're too crazy. <laughs> you want funny guy? We have the same sense of humor. <laughs> that awkward moment when you're completely serious and the person thinks you're kidding. Mrs. Levain. Florence? Because you've got one on better blind. You don't have to worry. Florence is very good. Oh, and after she's done, you might try to fill the little plastic cup. Oh, up. I hate that. No, I hate that. I can't do it. I'm sure you can. I can't do it. I'm terrible under pressure. Turn on the water. It'll inspire you. Turn on the water. Beer. A couple of beers will do it. That's all you need. A couple of beers. You can no prop. You want me? I'll be around the corner of the bar. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Danny, you hungry? No. Oh, Danny, what's the matter? You look terrible. I got a problem, Bert. Well, come on, that's what I'm here for. Let me have it. I met this girl, and I'm going crazy because I don't know how to get in touch with her. Where'd you meet her? In the cemetery. <laughs> For the seance. You pick up girls in the cemetery? <laughs> it's a long story. It's crazy. The world is overflowing with discos. He goes to a cemetery. <laughs> I was there visiting Elaine's grave, and uh, she was there visiting her husband's grave, and we started talking. Sounds romantic. <laughs> Not really. And like a jerk, I forgot to ask for a phone number. Come on. You don't just waltz up to somebody who's in mourning and say, excuse me, but when you're finished talking to your dearly departed, would you slip me your phone number? <laughs> What should I do, Bert? Danny, come on, think, think, think. She was talking to her husband's grave. Right? Yeah, so? So on the stone, there is information. Bert, they don't put phone numbers on people's graves. Your last name. No, Danny, Danny, the name, the name. There's a name on the stone. The name, of course. And the there was book. a name. You're a genius, Bert. All right, now think now. Connect the two names. What was his name? Peter. <laughs> Terrific. Call every Peter in Connecticut. <laughs> if one doesn't answer, that's him. Uh, Peter and Polly. Mr. and Mrs. Peter. Oh, damn, it's right on the tip of my tongue. You know, it's funny you should mention cemeteries because I've had this cemetery idea kicking around in my head here. And I just, you know, we're running out of cemetery space. Now, what if we took a state that nobody hardly ever uses? Like North Dakota. <laughs> We knocked down the mountains. We got a gigantic cemetery. I can almost see it. Pete. Here lies Peter. Even better than that. Listen to this one here. High rise cemeteries. Peter and Polly. Everybody gets a draw. Oh, uh, uh, oh listen. Shit, hold on. I hit the wrong button. Sorry. But, um, he's saying the, the name was Peter, but. Uh, is it possible that she was married to our Peter that was murdered in the first season? That sounds ridiculous, but this show is fucking ridiculous. And he keeps saying the name over and over again to Bert, which makes me think that this is connected somehow because Bert was Peter's actual father. Oh, God. Hold on. Everybody. You know, it's... it's like Sorry North for Dakota. the... Mess up in the, in the we thing. knocked down the mountains. We got a gigantic cemetery. Now we're replaying Bert's little monologue here. Here lies Peter. Even better than that. Listen to this one here. High rise cemeteries. <laughs> Peter and Polly. Everybody gets a drawer. They look like one huge file. What a mausoleum. You gotta be very tasteful about it. Here, just think See this now. This is Mr. A slot, right? <laughs> His wife, 
Got Cousin Al. The twins. And old Uncle Harvey. Dawson! And the Dawson! What the hell is a Dawson? Again, just fucking turn me into compost and grow something from me. I don't care. <laughs> Polly Dawson. Dawson, that's the name. Hi. Hey, Jody. I left Wendy with Corinne for the day just so I could get away. Uh, Bert. Yeah? Are you you or are you him? <laughs> no, that's right. No, it's all over now. I'm me. There's nothing, no problem. I'm me. How can I be sure? Jody, please. Come on, prove it. Your mother's maiden name was Gat. Not good enough. Corinne Tate was adopted. Nothing. You went to your junior prom with Mike Finnegan. I have heard. <laughs> Dawson. Dawson Peter. There's two columns of Peter Dawson. Who's he looking for? Peter Dawson. <laughs> that? The sandwich is so big. <laughs> That's playing it safe. He went to the Dagwood School of Sandwiches. <laughs> well, hello. Hello, yeah. Are you Peter Dawson? Oh. Well, you're alive then. Is that it? <laughs> He's alive. There goes the weekend. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, listen, uh, one more question. Uh, what color are you? Hello? <laughs> what color are you? <laughs> Ask him if he's dead, then you ask him what color he is. Come on, forget it. Will you, Bird? It's nothing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What color are you? This woman, this woman. What is what? Black? Yeah, what of it? A black woman? I don't see anything wrong with it. Of course not. You date guys. <laughs> Just because Tolly is black doesn't necessarily mean that Peter was black. If she's interested in Danny, then she clearly has an interest in other races. So I don't know why he's assuming that Peter was also black. You were a goat, I wouldn't blink. Or why Bird is mad. Gracie marries a gangster's daughter now to love with a black widow. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you talk like this, Bert. Talk like what? Just because I don't want him to hurt himself? That's not why you said that. Danny, that's the only reason I said anything here. Wait a minute. You want this? Danny! This has nothing to do with black people. I just don't want you to complicate your life. Come on, baby. It's complicated enough. Listen, Bert. Yesterday was the first time I enjoyed being with somebody since Elaine. And I'm going to find out why. So you can either help me or leave me alone. All right, Danny. All right, all right, all right. All right, Pyro, we'll help. Come on, sit. Come on, sit. Tell us what you want us to do. All right. All right, I figure if we hang out in the cemetery long enough, she's bound to come back to visit her husband. And when she does, we got her. So you want us to hang out in the cemetery? Yeah. Now, uh, now we'll break it up into shifts. I'll take the mornings. Jody, you take the afternoons. And Bert, you take the night shift. <laughs> Really appreciate this. Come on, Jody. Okay. All right. By myself in a cemetery. I hate cemeteries. Ha 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 ha. The sandwich was too big to eat, anyways. How the hell do men eat sandwiches like that? Confronting mood today, isn't she? When I was in school, desks were much bigger. But of course, then I was much smaller, which is probably why the desks were much bigger. So just forget I said that. <laughs> May I help you? No, thank you. I'll just wait. Who are you waiting for? The teacher. Oh. <laughs> Are you staying after school? <laughs> no, I'm Mrs. Walker. You're married? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, not that I should judge. In India, they get married when they're freshmen. In India, occasionally Tennessee. <laughs> no, 
I mean, I'm the teacher. Oh. Oh, my. And you're married? Divorced. Who are you? I'm Jessica Tate, Billy's mother. Oh. Oh, my. You see, I thought it would be nice if we finally met one another. It's, uh, very nice to meet you. Well, it's very nice to meet you, too. You certainly don't look like a teacher. <laughs> what are you thinking? I was thinking about what you must be thinking. Well, I don't know what I'm thinking, so I have no idea what you think I'm thinking. I think you're thinking that I must be a little weird. Yes. Well, because uh, Billy's a student, and I'm his teacher, and he is younger, and I'm older, that had occurred to me. <laughs> I do care about him, Mrs. Tate. He's very special. I know. And sensitive. I just don't want Billy to be hurt. I mean, suppose some good-looking hygiene teacher started hanging around you. <laughs> I mean, not that I think you're flighty or anything, but uh, you do see my point. Yes, but uh, what if Billy falls for some cheerleader? Then who gets hurt? You see, I, I can be hurt just as easily. Well, I guess maybe we should just lay back and see what happens. Her argument is, but what if the child finds somebody his own age that he's interested in? That's a really bad argument. Actually, I should do the laying back and you should just do the seeing. It's a deal. Well, I guess I'd better be going now. Me too. I've got a meeting with the history department in five minutes. So I'll just go. Okay. <laughs> May I be excused? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. I didn't know there was someone he actually liked. Oh, I love babies. They're short. As soon as they can talk back, I can't stand them. Chicks go talk and can't school me out. And do I love you well and howdy do we do we do we do Hey, listen, Jillies, you're gonna need a babysitter on the table. Hey, that's not such a good idea. Pause it just real quick to, to point out that Chuck's actor is very good because I was looking right at his lips during that and he's he's good he's decent <laughs> oh no he's really very good actually oh I'm, I'm sure he is oh l listen Joey I know that you're a worried new father but it's no big thing I mean just call Jay every Johnson? half hour or so and he'd answer the phone well, unless I'm changing a baby <laughs> well I'll think about it okay why don't you wash up and we'll have lunch okay I'll be out in a second I'll go with you hey what is it with you can't have her go by myself <laughs> on your mind well we received a call stating that you had an infant in your apartment so well sir we also received a complaint from who uh, it's a little difficult to discuss in the hallway thank you he was right to not mm. want to let him in mm. what does mm mean someone in the area called our offices and told us that a single young male homosexual was keeping a baby in his apartment are you he i happen to have a baby here yes right over there as a matter of fact He looks pale. He's a she, and so do you. <laughs> Mr. Dallas, please don't make this any harder than it already is. How am I making it hard? Listen, you walked in here. I did not come to you. Are you a practicing homosexual? I don't have to practice. I'm very good at it. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Where is the mother? I have no idea. Listen, who made the complaint? That's not important. Well, I'd hate to punch the wrong nose. <laughs> oh, easily provoked to violence. Listen, you're beginning to get on my nerves. I am the baby's father, and I'm a good father, and you're a very interesting man. I'd love to go on talking with you, but it's time to feed my child, so excuse Mr. me. Mr. Dallas, a very serious complaint has been made against you, and if this child is indeed in any danger, I'm afraid we are going to have to take certain measures. Hey. My social life and my child have nothing to do with each other. My life is my child. Now listen, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't have wild parties here. I don't even like to dance. I'm a responsible parent who's trying to bring up his little girl in the most wholesome atmosphere possible. And the friends that I have are equally responsible, wholesome, dependable, sane individuals. I can't believe this! Will you look at this? Your mother was a mistake. You're dry. Oh, Nice. Judy, he washed his hands. Well, you're supposed to wash your hands afterwards. Yeah, well, you're supposed to put me down first, you moron. <laughs> well, he's gonna shrink like crazy in a half an hour. I won't even be able to breathe. Hi there. Hey, who's at limp? Is he one of your tricks? <laughs> They're working on a new act. That man is arguing with a doll. Homosexuals and puppets? What kind of a place is this? Listen, uh, this conversation is over. You're touching me, young yeah, man. You were not invited in, and now you will be invited out. You might be a big trouble, fella. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in big trouble, Chuck. I'm in big trouble. I shouldn't have done that. That was really dumb. Oh, oh, come on, Jody. I mean, what can he possibly do? They can't take Wendy away from me. I'll get character references. Hey, hey, no problem. Yeah, you got Danny. Uh, don't forget Bert and Mary. Yeah, and Uncle Chester. Aunt Jessica. Chuck. Bob. Uh, don't you know this? Corinne. And don't forget the major. <laughs> I'm in big trouble. I can't take Wendy. I mean, who is she going to go with? The grandmother doesn't want her. The is mother's Bert's gone. Is Bert's insomnia really space lag? Or has he just been making up for lost time? Now that Jessica has met Leslie, does teacher's pet have new meaning? Will Danny find Polly? And if he does, what will he do? Now that Jessica has caught Chester and told him he can't come home, what will he do? How will he change his underwear? These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of So. This was a bit of a frustrating episode. Obviously, they're going to try to take Wendy. And that's fucked up. Because Jody is a good father. And Carol literally abandoned her. The grandmother literally abandoned her. Like, everybody in this child's life but Jody has fucking abandoned it. And now they're taking it away from Jody. Fuck that, man. And I know that's probably how it would have gone back then, but it's still frustrating. And also, what's up with Bird? I didn't think that he was racist. Like, that kind of came out of nowhere. But also, my dad kind of was the same way. At one point, he did say that if any of us brought home a black boy, he would kill everybody in the house. But he killed himself, so it's fine now. I can suck melodated cocks if I want to.